2018 was the beginning. From podcast to live events, Fight Night Picks was off and running. Do you typically train for a fight with a specific game plan in mind, or do you train for a certain opponent? Honest to God, I always have the same game plan. A year later, a new ad. The cringe fest continues with Henry Cejudo. He pulled out a snake today. Old clip. Uh Since then, it's been a wild ride. 2022 shaping up to be another crazy year. Hurt Chandler. He might be peacocking right now. I think that left hook. Oh, big, big right time hand. right hands, Michael Chandler. Oh, they both been hurt this time. Oh. So as they say, let's get into it. Absolute banger. Coming up this weekend in our main event, it is the Boston finisher, Calvin Cater, representing the New England cartel, taking on Georgia's Giga Chikadze. You know him as the ninja, a guy who coming into the UFC fought some of the worst competition we've ever seen, and then he absolutely flips the script. He has a fight on Contender Series against Austin Springer, and in that fight, does he win that fight? No, he does not. He decided to grapple a little bit too much, but... What will impress you is the fact that that one was back in 2018. He beats CJ Baines, who's 2-31. and 31. He beats, uh, who else? Damian Manzanares, who's 0-1. And, and then it's Brandon Davis, Jamal Emmers, Erwin Rivera, Omar Morales. We're talking Jamie Simmons, Cub Swanson, and his last time out against Edson Barboza in his first main event with UFC. He looked absolutely amazing. And for Giga... You're taking on, I'm not going to say a carbon copy, but a very, very polished striker and a guy like Edson Barboza who's been at the top of the mountain, who's challenged some of the best guys out there, like Habib Nurmagomedov or Eagles FC's own Kevin Lee. It was such an interesting fight to where Giga really showed up and made himself a star in that performance and ultimately made himself into a pretty hefty favorite coming up this weekend against Calvin Cater, who's probably looking at this one like y'all must have forgot. Giga Chikaze beat Edson Barbosa like he owed him money. Like, there was some viciousness behind those strikes. And it was a fight that, I'll be honest, I kind of counted Chikaze out in because Edson was established. He's at the top of the division, widely known as one of the best pure strikers, not even in the lighter weight class. It's just a across MMA. I wouldn't even just restrict him to the UFC. That's how good Edson is. But Giga was so smart in that fight, and that's the first thing we're going to talk about. Giga Shikaze didn't beat Edson Barbosa because he's a better striker than him. Yes, he did. Don't get me wrong. He is a better striker than him. But Giga showed that he is a very cerebral fighter in that. And it was odd because I didn't give him that credit, at least early on in his UFC career, because I looked at that as more inactivity and less as him downloading his opponent. But now I think we have a better understanding as to what Giga Shikaze's overall game is. This is something I've been talking about a lot with, like, Joanne Wood. I'm surprised you agreed with me on it as as much as you did but some fighters don't really have game plans that are built to finishing fights or really that have great synergy with themselves giga i thought was one of those fighters to where nothing he really does works together although his talent is extreme but now i can see okay he kind of has a bit of a pyotr yawn game plan to him where yes he's had a few early uh early stoppages especially as of late but when giga chikaze is at his best it's i'm throwing out prodding shots early on i'm gonna stay that long range technical striker i'm gonna be very defensively sound and and then the second I notice a chink in your armor, I'm going to go after it and I'm going to exploit your weaknesses. It's just such a great thing to see out of Giga Shikaze because there's so many fighters in the UFC where we point at one thing that they do really, really well. And then there's all these negatives that sort of prevent that one positive from shining through. Shikaze hasn't let his few negatives overpower the immense positives in his game. But this is the thing, and I said this for an earlier fight, and I feel like it's the same thing. Nobody's giving Calvin Cater any credit this weekend, and I'm very surprised about that. And I understand he's coming off of not a great performance against Max Holloway, but I think we do a pretty good job at this. You can't just look at the wins and losses on a guy's record and just judge them by that. You have to dive a little bit further. And the one thing that Calvin Cater is far better at Giga Chikadze at is counter-striking. If Calvin Cater catches Giga on the way in with one of those overhand rights or right straights, he's going to put him out. And I'm confident in saying that. Like, I know people are going to be down there, oh, but he's been hit clean before. Not really. Like, that's the only question mark about Giga Chikadze is, if he gets hit clean by Calvin Cater, what's it going to look like? Because... That's sort of the give and take about being such a cerebral fighter and about being a fighter who doesn't take a lot of punishment. We don't really know what you look like when you are forced to panic. Now, I used to roll your eyes a lot because I would say this about Cyril Gaon all the time, but Cyril Gaon finally had a fight against Alexander Volkov where he faced some adversity. Yes, he won that fight and he looked very good, but it was finally a fight that I could look at and say, okay, he got hit clean, he had moments not go his way, but he fought through them and he looked better as the fight goes on. That's all I can really ask for in a guy's progression or a girl's progression throughout this sport. And that's what we've seen out of Chikaze. But I don't think we can count Calvin Cater out. Because 
with his counterboxing, he's got some of the best pull twos in the game. When he counters your straight shots or your hooks and comes back with a straight of his own, if he can hit Max Holloway clean doing that in the fifth round of a fight where he's absorbed 500 strikes, I think he can do it to uh, Giga Chikaze at least at some point throughout their fight. And that's the craziest thing. When you look at this fight and you look at the numbers, and listen, we used to go heavy into the numbers. Now we don't totally. Don't do we. I've always been against When, when you do look into it, I mean, for Calvin Cater in the UFC, the way higher level of confidence. I mean, that's notwithstanding with Edson Barboza. You go through it. Cater comes into the UFC off of a good run with CES. And oh, by the way, he owns Combat Zone, which is in New Hampshire, another MMA promotion. But you look at it. He debuts at UFC 214 against Andre Feely. That's big. Then he knocks out Shane Burgos at home, UFC 220 with me in the nosebleeds. He loses to Moicano, UFC 223. Beats Chris Fishgold in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. I asked him about the bird. Then he beats Ricardo Lamas, loses to Zabit. But he was coming back in that main event. Beats Jeremy Stevens. Beats Dan Ige in a main event. Lose to Max Holloway. All of this, much higher level of competition. For Giga Chikadze, you got to remember, his third to last fight, it was on short notice. It wasn't originally supposed to be him. But it was against Jamie Simmons. And don't get me wrong. I like Jamie Simmons as a fighter, so on and so forth. He gets submitted by Johnny Munoz Jr., Johnny Munoz Jr. is nowhere near a ranked fighter right now in the UFC. So, so bad, though. you can poke holes like Swiss cheese through the record, but I'm here to tell you again, Giga fought terrible competition outside of the UFC. Paltry. Like some of the worst I've ever seen in my life. It'd be like fighting JLS every night. Sometimes you're going to beat Gerald Mearshart. Sometimes you're going to lose the guys that are 4-0. But for Giga, it was bad competition. But in the UFC, Calvin Cater's strike rate is insane, but his strikes absorbed per minute is bad, and that Max Holloway fight accentuates that. That's why, again, when you look at the numbers, if you're one of those guys that's just hamming away at the keyboard, well, I'm here to tell you this, Calvin Cater's strike rate's a negative three. It is, but you got to factor in certain fights before you go out there and fight that fight. So when I look at that, again... Cater is one of the best fighters at keeping his defensive hips, at keeping guys off of him, staying off of the mat. One of the best all time that we've ever to seen up to. at featherweight. And to pop back up to his feet, he barely ever spends any time off his back. You can back that one up by stats if you don't have that argument on the interwebs. Giga Chikadze, the only knock I ever had on him was in the Austin Springer fight. Yeah, he had a, what, two submission wins outside of the UFC or on his way up. And then he fights Springer, who's... Not great. He ended up in the UFC, but he hasn't been great. But in that fight, Giga was like, yeah, I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to try and grab an Omoplata, and then we're going to try and move into another position. It just didn't work out for him. But since then, he's been on absolute fire. Only two split decision wins. What was it? The Brandon Davis fight, and then Jamal Emers in the UFC. Those two are by split. And then 2020 into 2021, it's absolutely wild stuff. Uh, four wins in 2020, and then three big wins last year. Main event against Edson Barboza. A great win against Cub Swanson that ages like fine wine based off what Cub looked like in his last fight against Darren Elkins. So we said from the start, everybody's counting out Calvin Cater. He is a plus 195 underdog. I... It was really hard to find odds on this one, truth be told, which is weird. But Best Fight Odds doesn't have them. Certain other sites don't have them. Chikadze's around a minus 250. And if we look over on Topology, the votes are not close at all. Uh, 1,578 total votes. 83% Chikadze, 17% Cater. If we head on over to the Fight Night Picks YouTube channel, we threw it out there, Matt, in the community tab, as we tend to do. So this is your chance to shine. Let's see. 79% wow. of the fans have Chikadze. You have five, uh, 21% that have Cater. And Matt, over in the comments section, JK says, honestly, I kind of want Cater to win just so that Korean Zombie has a chance of getting a title At shot. At least he's honest. That's fine. Uh, Drew is saying Cater is a beast, but I just don't think he can match Giga on the feet nor will he be able to take him down. Which, yeah, I mean, Cater doesn't really take anybody down. And then uh, Voodoo saying, dang, I thought the card was today, but it's next weekend. So that's good. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, who else? Tyler is saying Giga with the, the praying so hands emoji. So Matt, just about everybody's taking Giga Chikadze in this one. Calvin Cater, some of the best, most crisp boxing you're going to find at 145. Does he have a big propensity of throwing the leg kick or checking it? Uh, he can check them, but not really. Like, he'll get lazy with it. Sometimes he will, but you're right. It's not a big strength of his game. This is my problem, and I'm going to bring up another big-time athlete who's taking a lot of time off, and he's coming back tomorrow. Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson's one of the best athletes in the world. That's not an arguable fact. He makes hundreds of millions of dollars to play basketball. He is a world-class athlete. 
He's coming back in a sport that allows you to ease yourself back, though, because they have a very, very long season. He is an all-star, but even his coaches come out and said, we're only going to play about 15, 20 minutes, we're going to ease him back into it, and we're going to let Clay slowly become Clay again. Calvin Cater is coming off a very long time off. He's almost a year. Almost a year. He had a very bad loss his last time out, had some injuries. I just don't think this is them easing him back in. Like, if Calvin Cater got... Even, like, uh, uh, a prelim main event on, like, uh, a pay-per-view, I feel like that'd be the perfect position for him right now because you need him to have that sort of one fight back to get back on the horse because this is the problem with Calvin Cater. He seems to beat a lot of guys in that 7 to 10 range, and then they want to give him number 3 in the world. And it's like, okay, build yourself up a little bit better because all of his losses are to those top guys. I guess not Moicano at the time. You get it. Zabit and Max Holloway were a step too far. He seems to build himself up to, like, the 5th ranked fighter, and then it's always a step too far to get past that. If it was him coming off the Dan Ige win, and if it was Giga just coming off the Barbosa win, and and everything was normal. I'd have a really hard time with this prediction, but with this fight being set up the way it is, and with Giga Chikadze being so hot right now, I think he's going to be able to get the win. I really do. Hansel. He's so hot right now. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, I think a fight for Cater that would have made sense is a guy that I only ever see on Twitter having a good time with his pops. It's Arnold Allen. Great last name. That'd be a great fight too. But yeah, I mean, this is just a really tricky one. And the thing for Cater is you look at it above him. So who is there? Korean Zabi, who might be challenging for the title. That's what Volkanovski wants. There's Brian Ortega, there's Max Holloway, and there's Jerry Rodriguez. And that's it. <laughs> Those are scary men, Craig. So it really is tough. It doesn't get any easier. It never really does in any other division, but it doesn't at featherweight because it's one of the most dynamic. And for Giga, not just the Giga kick, but again, the prodding shots in the first round, to set it up in the second round, to get into the third round. The team at Kings MMA set him up so well for success. I'm going with Giga Chikadze in this fight for sure. I agree with you, but this will be the interesting thing. So he got past the Edson Barbosa uh, uh, skill test, I guess. If he gets past Cater, do you Rodriguez, think Rodriguez, uh, make it happen. Exactly. Do you think they just keep on going striker, striker, striker? Or eventually, will he have to fight a wrestler before he fights Volkanovski? Because here's the problem. If he does it, we both know what Volkanovski's going to do. He's going to pick him up over his head, slam him down, fight him like Jeremy Kennedy. Why I just... Not? I... Mm, Mm, but maybe, because this is the problem with Giga. He's very one-dimensional. He does that one dimension extremely well, but I do worry about him when he is going to start fighting the more well-rounded guys at the top of this division, because his run to the top has been full of, not cans, but definitely guys who he's been better than. And older fighters kind of past their prime. Like, I, I thought Barbosa was going to beat him, but Barbosa's been in quite a few wars at this stage of his career, and Cub Swanson's not young by any stage, so I think if Giga gets this win, he'll finally get the respect he deserves, and he'll be looked at as, okay, maybe one more fight than title shot, and I think he'll be able to get it done. But I do think this will be a great fight. I don't see this being a quick knockout either way. I think this will go round three, round four, be like a really good back and forth fight. Calvin Cater coming off a really tricky loss and a long layoff against Max Holloway for Giga Chikadze wins over Jamie Simmons by knockout, Kevin Swanson by knockout, the man himself, Edson Barboza. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have in this fight because we have a big time banger at 145. Both of us going with George's Giga Chikadze, the ninja to get the win. Make sure you check out question mark kicks on Saturday, two hours before the prelims and a giant heads up. Muslim Salikov was supposed to be taking on Michelle Pereira in the co-main event on this card. Salikov is out. I would assume Pereira is probably going to get another opponent because from 15 fights a couple of days ago, there's only 11 slated right now as we are Saturday to get ready for this one. So make sure you subscribe so you know exactly when we release those new videos and updates because we do it as soon as we possibly can with as much tape study and information that you know and love. So keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks and as we always say, let's get into it.